This is John Diebler, the all-time leader in three-pointers made in Big Ten history, and you're listening to Drive the Lane Podcast. Welcome back in to the Drive the Lane Podcast, and after an absolutely crazy, busy week of Ohio State sports, we bring you a jam-packed episode. We have two interviews. We talk about football. We talk about basketball. Our interviews are with Beanie Wells, the legend, and Barstool Riggs, Barstool's college basketball insider. We talk about everything in this episode. And guess what? We're still sponsored by High Street Tees. I cannot stress enough how comfortable High Street Tees shirts are. You know, it is my new game day shirt. It is Joey's game day shirt. We both wear the threes shirt. It represents Ohio State, represents those bars, represents High Street Tees. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Ohio State undefeated when I wear my High Street T shirt. Undefeated when Joey wears his High Street T shirt. And you know what? Drive the lane is going to save you some money. Go to highstreettees.com slash DTL and at checkout use promo code DTL15 for 15% off your order. They got Buckeye Donuts, Mama's Paps and Brew. You've heard us say it a million times, RIP Mama's Paps and Brew, but threes, twos, fours, nines, eights, they got it all. Go to highstreettees.com slash DTL, promo code DTL15, and when you're done doing that, buckle up and drive the lane. When they talking, I don't really care. Homie to me, they cannot compare. They wanted a star, they just got a square. Just like when Joey, they up on a prayer. Plan on they don't that I will represent. Give you my heart tonight. And boom. Or should I say Beanie? Ooh. Yeah. Drive the Lane Podcast. Here we are back with another great episode. We have two fantastic guests, and it relates straight to football and basketball. So what are we going to talk about? A little bit of both, but we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about our number one ranked Ohio State Buckeye football team. They are incredible. They are unstoppable. Yeah, I was going to say, incredible is not the right word. Unstoppable is much, much better. They are the Ohio State University football team. They are ranked number one, and there's only one man that can beat them. Joe Burrow. Joe Buckeye Burrow. Isn't that incredible? I will never forget being in UDF with Joe Burrow, Austin Grandstaff, (laughs) Mickey Mitchell, and Daniel Giddens. And I'm not as close to Joe Burrow as those guys are. Um, but my freshman year, like, I saw him in there, like, more than five times on Friday, Saturday nights. Um, who knows what he was doing? But uh, um, it's funny because that's what I always think about when the dude is throwing for 400 yards and five touchdowns against what we thought was the unbeatable Alabama Crimson Tide. Um, but what's crazy, I saw, I saw an article that – um, everyone in his hometown, Athens, Ohio, is now LSU fans, which is <laughs> so, so cool. Well, I, I was just so happy that we, that we got Joe Burrow. He's been so great for us, and we think we're the best team in the country. Go Tigers! Uh, Coach O, why, um, what separates your team right now from all the other teams in the SEC? Roll Tide, fuck you. <laughs> Did you see that video? Yeah, that was, yeah that's not good for that player. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> if, if Coach Holtman... Had, one of us was lo- Instagram Live, and first of all, Coach Holman would never say anything negative about any team or anyone ever. So, um, but if he were, and one of us was on Instagram Live, for it, well, it's just insane. First of all, there's only 12 guys in the locker room, whatever, 14 guys, whereas in football there's hundreds. So like, I, everyone's accounted for in basketball and not in football. It literally couldn't even happen in basketball. But that was so unbelievably funny. It was and, it was so great. And because Coach, I uh, go Tigers. Uh, we got. Great football coach, and I'm so happy for the state of Louisiana in this great school. Go Tigers. Am I better at it than you? I think I might be. Go Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> He's not. Your, your impression of him is a combination of of Chris Berman and Coach O. <laughs> I think I, we start in LSU. Where, uh, go Tigers. <laughs> We start. They're not gonna catch him because he's a gold tigers. <laughs> but Joe Burrow is the only man that can stop the Buckeyes, and even if he does, it's okay because it's how Joe Burrow. awesome is it gonna be when the Heisman finalists are Joe Burrow, Justin Fields, and J.K. Dobbins? 
Yeah, and it would have been R.I.P. to Chase Young's been, uh, Heisman chances. Chase Young, but unfortunately, that selfish jerk wanted his girlfriend to get to watch him in a football game. Wait, I mean, me, talk about selfish and disrespectful <laughs> to the team to want one of your loved ones to be able to watch you. I mean, that is just. It's disgusting. <laughs> I think I'm taking this joke a little too far. <laughs> Wait, no. If we're if we're being serious for a hot second about um, Chase, the whole Chase Young situation, why would he borrow money? Why would the girlfriend borrow money? Yeah. And then there's no. Uh, uh, uh. My hey, sister's actually good friends with with her with his girlfriends, which is kind of funny. But I mean, I don't know why. Funny. I don't know if that's what. But um, why wouldn't the girlfriend just say, hey, mom and dad, my boyfriend who's about to be the number one pick in the draft, you think he could throw me 200 bucks to go to the game? He'll pay me back and then some the in N- seven months. The NCAA was probably like this. They were probably sitting in their office and they got the report. Chase Young borrows money to buy uh, a, a flight for his girlfriend and they all probably looked at each other at a table and they heard... <laughs> I mean... We're oh, supposed to save that for later in the oh, show. We'll, we'll use it later. Ohio State clearly... Did not need him. Yeah, and they won't need him next week either, which is great. Give him some rest. What's the spread going to be? Minus 50? It's already already 50. Is it 50? Yeah, it's 50 and a half. I might take the Buckeyes. I don't bet, so I wouldn't. I don't bet either. I'm saying, like, I would maybe might take them. That's what I meant to say. But they just – we don't really need to spend a lot of time on the game. They had 10 touchdowns. That's a lot of touchdowns. We tweeted about them having 10 touchdowns. 10 touchdowns. What's crazier? 10 touchdowns. 10 touchdowns? 10 touchdowns. Or 73 points. Like, what's, what's, when you hear Ohio State scored 10 touchdowns or when you hear Ohio <laughs> State had 73 points? Aren't they synonymous because in order to have. Nope. Oh, you can just kick a lot of field goals? Or you could get 35 safeties. If there's any school to give up 35 safeties, it'd be Maryland. No, it would be Rutgers. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, see. You'll, we'll find out next week. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I think if to seriously answer your question, when you hear seventy three points, that's a lot. That's a basketball score. We do, they beat us when we played Cincinnati, which we'll talk about later. But um, when you when you hear seventy three points, that's incredible. Whereas ten touchdowns is also incredible. But it might take you a second to realize, oh wow, that equates to seventy, you know, seven points or whatever you might yeah. have in the game because of it. Yeah, it was just it's so easy to watch Ohio State football because there's no pressure, no stress. It's yeah. It's awesome. My mom, Nancy Lane, like, I mean, she is so hard to watch football games with, and Andrew saw it firsthand. Even with her, it's all right now because when we play, like, when we played Indiana or when we played Cincinnati or all these games where we won by 100 points and the game was literally never in doubt, even she is able to sit down on the couch and, and shut up for a little bit, <laughs> which usually, Andrew, back me up on this, it's impossible to watch a game. I do not want to say anything negative. Yeah, that's good. You should about your lovely mother, mom. If you but, saw the face that he's making right now, but, oh my gosh! But she might be louder than Coach L. Yeah, she she is very superstitious. So she didn't watch the whole game with us because we weren't we we watched the game with her um, when we played Wisconsin, and that the first half we were up like ten nothing, ten three, whatever it was, um, and the game was not you know done already. But she. Um, at halftime was like, oh, we're all, first of all, I'm trying to push her out and go into a different room anyway because she is loud, um, and loud is, is a nice way of phrasing it, but more so she wanted to go to the other room because that's her lucky room, and she takes her OH pillows in there with her, and as soon as that happened, we went on a huge run, and she thinks that she's the reason why Ohio State's undefeated. This I, year. Almost, I almost texted Chase Young to ask if he could get your mom a plane ticket so she could watch the game in a different room because she was so loud. It's not funny because you don't have his number. True. I almost DM'd him. Yeah. Hey, man. I know you, like, have a secret access to plane tickets, stuff (laughs) like that. Doesn't Ohio State have a team plane? Why couldn't they have stopped wherever his girlfriend lives and scooped her up? She lives in Columbus. That is one of the things that I've said this year, like, to Dockage. Like, I was in Columbus for the the first game against Cincinnati, um, and I was, like, we were talking about how I'm going to be going to to Vegas for the game later this year, uh, and I was like, dude, there's got to be an extra seat on the plane for me to just hop in. Like, what's the harm in me coming? Obviously, it's a little different when you're bringing your girlfriend on, but, like, mm-hmm. for a former player, what do I – I got to donate 20 bucks to be a booster, and then I can come? Like, what do, like, True. What do we got to do? This – this, you know, it's frustrating to talk about the Chase Young thing because we all – I haven't met 
I haven't seen one thing that someone was like, he's getting what he deserves. Yeah, no one, literally like, even, like I talk about, we talk about it with the BD interview a little bit. Like there's always going to be those people that like we like we call like old mans yelling at the clouds like, when, back in my day, like this is not how it's supposed to be. Whatever. Go Tigers. Yeah, go Tigers. Um, they, even them, like no one is like, sit Chase Young, he did something so wrong. Like who, it doesn't hurt anyone. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just insane. But it's funny because, you know, when we're planning out this show, we're talking about what we're, we're going to talk about Ohio State football and Chase Young. And, like, how much is there really to say about Ohio State football? Because week in and week out, it's like, okay, they dominated. They're the number one team in the country. They'll probably be number two this week because LSU won. But other than that, like, Justin Fields looks awesome. J.K. Dobbins looks awesome. Our defense is unstoppable. Like, what? Like, what do you. Uh, there's nothing else to say. Like, yeah, like, it's, it's crazy because we have all these like, headlines week in, week out, and they're all the same, and then it's like, oh, like, something like K.J. Hill is going to end up being the leading, like, maybe not receiver, but, like, receptions in Ohio State history. Like, that doesn't even get talked about at all. Like, J.K. Dobbins might be the leading rusher if something crazy happens and he comes back. Like, all this stuff, it's like, Ohio State is going to have one of the best teams they've ever had. And it's like, at what point do we draw the line? It's like, all right, like, we're just beating a dead horse. Like, we can't just keep talking about it over and over again. Even though it's awesome. So then let's stop talking about it and let's talk about some basketball. Oh, my God. You read my mind. That was my long-winded way of saying, all right, it's basketball season. Best thing about being 2-0? Chance to go 3-0. and We just watched uh, um, your Ohio State Buckeyes take down uh, the River Hawks of UMass Lowell. Shout-out to Stacy, uh, my old AAU coach, who is one of their all-time best players at uh, UMass Lowell. Lowell, Lowell, whatever you do. It doesn't matter what they call it because somehow they covered the spread today. Um, but, yeah, I was super impressed with all the boys, the defense. I mean, obviously we're playing a team like UMass, Lowell. Like you're supposed to, um, yeah, you're supposed to, uh, you know, assert your dominance, especially on the defensive end. Um, like, it doesn't. Our defense looks great. Cincinnati's a talented team, and we made them look really bad. And we did the same thing with with UMass L. I think my favorite player on the team is Kyle Young. Yeah, Kyle Young is the might He's end up awesome. being the hardest playing player in the country. Someone tweeted at me and asked who plays harder, JT, J. Sean Tate, or Kyle Young. And it's not an easy answer. This is the first time Kyle's really been healthy um, in his years as a Buckeye. Um, but, like, JT is the all-time hardest playing guy. Him and Aaron Kraft probably are, like, the all-time hardest playing dudes. But Kyle Young is gaining ground because without Kyle, we don't win that game against Cincinnati. He kept us in the game and then... Helped us pull away. I mean, the dude plays hard. He plays harder than anyone else. And what, what, that's what Coach Holtman expected when he got a guy like Kyle Young. The dude is just the ultimate energy giver. Yeah, he he's awesome. He's 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 great to watch. DJ Carter. I mean, it wasn't hard to predict who was going to be fun to watch, who was going to be good. Well, but, no one would have said Kyle Young is going to be fun to watch. Right. But I, I thought I honestly thought EJ Liddell had a subpar game against Cincinnati. It's his first game ever. He's allowed to have a subpar game. <laughs> But he was swatting the shit out of some shots today. Yeah. He is he is a DJ Carton is a walking highlight reel, and EJ Liddell is gonna have some awesome, awesome chase down blocks. I think Chase Young down blocks. I think uh <laughs> I think EJ Liddell, what's so great about him is he is showing some clear versatility in terms of he's gonna be able to if Caleb's in foul trouble, he'll be able to play some five or play alongside Kyle Young. Um, and give us, like, an inside presence protecting the rim. Um, but even on offense, like, he he missed some bunnies today. He missed some shots that he will make, definitely. But he gives us a little bit, maybe not a back-to-the-basket low point, low post-scoring threat, but I love what he brings to the table. Um, if, worst-case scenario, Caleb has to sit because he has two fouls or whatever the case may be. Like, we didn't really have that last year. Um, there's a lot of things that this team has that we didn't have last year. But the fact that we have some depth in the front court um, – and obviously some super, super talented, fun-to-watch guards. Like, this team is shaping into, like, a really exciting team. I I said after the game, um, when I was in the airport uh, waiting to fly home, I basically summed up the game in three bullet points, and that was um, Kyle, talked about Kyle Young being one of the hardest-playing guys, uh, talked about how winning ugly is a skill, and the fact that we won ugly um, is obviously better than the alternative, but, like, there's a very there's an awesome satisfaction that comes with winning like a rock fight type of game and um that's what we just what we did and then finally it was um three-point shooting is is what's going to take us either from a really good team to a really great team elite team um and I think our best three-point shooter besides like Dwayne Washington is probably Caleb Blessed so 
Don't, Burton's a pretty good three-point shooter. Yeah, but he, but he's not a sh- uh, he could shoot better than people think, but like like first of all, like it starts with Dwayne Washington. I think he's going to have to be he's one of the only guys that really can create his own shot on the team. I think he's going to be huge for our offense whether it's shooting or anything else. But other guys like um Caleb West and Justin Arns, like the guys who are hitting shots, like CJ Walker's making shots, Luther Muhammad's making catch and shoot open shots, like that will make it so you can't double team Caleb Wesson because if you double team Caleb, he's just going to kick it out, swing, swing, open three. So that's what my takeaways were from the initial game after tonight. Like our offense looked a lot better. I think um, the sky's the limit for this team. It's a lot of young talent, and it's it's just exciting to see where we go. They're, they have a lot of guys that could get in and that could play. Like Ga- like Alonzo Gaffney didn't play the first game, and then today he came in, he was hitting threes, he was getting rebounds, putting back shots. It's it's funny in, in college, like pl- players don't like le- – you, you can't make trades, obviously. Right. But if this Ohio State team could make trades, traded. there are a lot of bench players that could be packaged that would be traded in playing starters minutes for sure. In the Big Ten. Yeah, I think it's so funny because year in and year out, it's clear that especially at the top programs, that's the case. I mean, like, even, like, when we would play, like, these these really, really low major Division One teams, like, it's funny because I would go out there and I'd have a great game. It'd be like, it's just makes it so clear that people are on these teams for a reason. Like, when people are frustrated with why guys aren't playing or whatever, like, it's not because they're not good enough. Like, they got there based on their talent. It's there are certain expectations and stuff that need to be met in order for you to get on the court. And if they could make trades, I'm sure people would be calling about Alonzo Gaffney because the dude's got right. potential yeah. out the wazoo. I mean, um, so yeah, it, it is. It's funny because I'm sh- I've seen them practice, and when you divide the team up, it's some really really awesome games. And like the scout team, I'm sure is incredible this year because we're gonna have, I mean, Danny Hummer, Harrison Hook, Fit Justice. Um, I mean, it's just that's gonna be. That's a competitive team also. And those I mean, are the guys that literally don't yeah. play. The second five can definitely beat the starting five in like a in like a regular game. Yeah, I mean, but you can't stop Caleb Wilson. But also, yeah. uh, we, Musa Jal is not even back yet. Musa Jal is not even That's back. That's another guy. They're they're so they're so deep. And what's different from this team than, than kind of teams in Holtman's past and maybe the end of the Mata era as well, and no disrespect <laughs> to one Me. of your good friends, a friend of the show, there's no room on this team for an Andrew Dockage to get minutes on this team. No, I guess not. It's funny because if you take a step back and you look at it, not in terms of like talent, but just pieces that they have, me, my situation as a senior where we had a bunch of young, talented guys who we needed to get minutes and get them playing, like there was no room for me to play because I was, I was getting reps in practice. like I was preparing to play almost every single game, but there was no – there was no playing time for me just because of the sheer numbers. My junior year, when Andrew was playing, we didn't have those numbers. We we needed Andrew to play. Not that Andrew shouldn't have been on the court. The dude was one of, if not the most important team player besides like your Jay Sean Tate or Kata Bates Diop. So yeah, you look at it this year, like he's not taking the place of CJ Walker or DJ Carton, but a guy like Andrew, I I'm not taking any offense to it, but I gotta back him up because a guy like Andrew Dockic. There, every team doesn't have a guy like him. So. Right, but you you get what I'm saying. I'm like, totally. There's like no Dockage, Dockage There's just, no room for a for a for a for a glue guy. Right, like, and the reason know, our glue the guy reason, is Andre Wesson, who's awesome. Right, the reason Dockage was so important to that team is because if he couldn't give you meaningful minutes, then you had nothing. You know. What about me? You, come on, let's be serious for a second. You know what I'm. I'm you okay. know what I'm saying. I I know what you're saying. You like, you're not right in that point. You're not. But I'm saying I know what you're saying in terms of Andrew Dockage. You know, was the f- the floor is not Andrew Dockich anymore, right? Like, um, you know, a guy that is coming in there just to handle the ball and distribute it. Or like, now we have every guy who comes in as a threat from from one through like twelve. I mean, like, I love Danny Hummer and Harrison Hookfin. Obviously, you know, they're probably not going to be getting those minutes, but like, we have a super super deep and talented roster. So so who who knows what's going to happen this year and who's going to step up? I mean, it's it's do you it's think? Awesome. Do you think? And I and I know you would never. You probably. Would never say yes if the answer was yes, even if you knew. Do you think there could potentially be a scenario where one of the guys who's playing 10 minutes less than he would be on another team could say, you know what, I love Ohio State, I love the brotherhood, I want to be a part of something special, but I want to go play at Cincinnati and start and play the whole game? No, that's a great question because 
The answer is, of course, there could be someone like that. And that's such a hard decision, especially because I know how close the team wa- the team is, um, whether it's you know class by class and how close they are with each other or the team as a whole. So I think that's a really hard decision. But at the end of the day, you do have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, look, like, is this the best place for my future selfishly? Uh, because if that matters to you the most, like for me, obviously, it didn't matter or else I would have transferred mm-hmm. somewhere. I was... I was totally, totally for the team's success every day, day in, day out. So that didn't matter to me. Like, you know, a guy like, I mean, we'll use Andrew Dockage. Let's say Andrew Dockage is on this team, and he knows, like, because he left Michigan to go to Ohio State. A guy like him, it, this, the selfish, like, he didn't want to have any regrets. So that matters to him. You know, he, it matters um, to the fact that he wants the minutes and the production like that. I, I It's not fair to say that that comes before the team because it doesn't, but... That's something that matters to him. So it's different. I mean, every person is different. A guy like Kyle Young, he's not leaving Ohio State. doesn't matter. Obviously, well, he's, he's not because he yeah. has great production. But even his freshman and a little bit last year, like he wasn't getting the minutes maybe he thought he would. Like I'm not speaking for him, but a guy like him is not leaving Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Like he loves it so, he loves it so, so much. Obviously, it's different now because he's playing a ton and he's the heartbeat of the team. But, um, you know, there are certain folks that would transfer and certain folks wouldn't. I don't know totally what the Ohio State, yeah. you know, what the makeup of those guys are. You know, go, yeah. going into the season, my thought was, I think that Dwayne Washington is, if you take him as a person out of it and you take Ohio State as a program out of it, he would be someone that could potentially look to transfer because of his potential. Absolutely. And the skit, like he, he's a college basketball starter, 100%. He started today. Right. <laughs> so, so he's definitely a college basketball star. Or then, then you flip it with Luther Muhammad. But like when you when you watch these guys after the game in the locker room, like after that Cincinnati game when they were doing our, on our defense, yeah. we I was like, okay, none of these guys are transferring. You know, but right, exactly. but they could hit a wall. They could hit a wall. Something could totally. happen. You never I, know what's going to happen. They're 19, 18, 20 year old kids. Like they have so much influence in their lives that go so far beyond what they think in their own head. It's just like. Like, I mean, dudes who have transferred in the past, like, I'm not naming names by any means, but, like, uh, it, it, like it, they have, whether it's their dad or their AAU coach, they're saying, they're saying, hey, hey, Jimmy, like, you are, well, not Jimmy Jet, but, <laughs> hey, Jimmy, you know, like, you're better than this. Like, you can go start half the programs. Like, we got to leave. Like, no, stay the course. Like, you see guys all the time, like Frank Kaminsky. Like, the dude went from nobody to the NCAA player of the yeah. year because he stayed the course. So, so, yeah, but if... This is the last thing. Yeah. This is the last thing I'll say about it, and then sure. we'll move on. Um, but to sum up kind of what we just talked about, if someone transfers from this Ohio State team, it's going to be because they want to go be a starter or something. Yeah, it's not going to be because of the culture State. Yeah. or they don't like Holtman or anything. Or maybe totally. they maybe they don't like Holtman is kind of the wrong way to say it. Maybe they believe they should be getting more minutes, but it's not going to be a situation where yeah. they're like – I hate Ohio State. I'm getting oh, out of here. Like players who were on past. your team in the past. Yeah, I think the way to phrase it would be, it would be the hardest decision of their lives to leave. Yes, because they know what's best for them, but they're not selfish people. So it will. That's where. That's where I think the. And, where, it, and uh, it's where, tough. And it's tough when you have C.J. Walker starting on your team, who is a positive of someone who transfers. Right. You know? So you could you could potentially have a guy on your bench that thinks. God, look what's look at the decision CJ made, and now he's a starter. He's the leader, of the, like one of the leaders of the team. Yeah, no, so. t- you're you're spot on because I have kind of experienced this in terms of like I wanted in my heart of hearts I wanted to leave because like I wanted to go play. I didn't want to have any regrets. I didn't want any what ifs. Like what if I went to a right state and played, you know? But at the same time, like when I look at the trade offs, like what, what outweighed it all was Ohio State University and this team. Like and my brothers, like I wasn't leaving. So, boom, there you go, beanie, boom, beanie. Being in the boom. All right. Something else we want to talk about on this episode. Something fun. Something exciting. very fun. Not controversial. Not controversial, but <laughs> argumentative. Okay. You you introduce this. This is your this is your this is your uh, no pun intended, your creation. Yeah, so <laughs> nice. <laughs> um so I'm a big podcast guy. I listen to Titus and Tate's once shining podcast all the time. That is now done as you we've talked about before. Titus is is moving on. Um but what they did in one of their last episodes was they had a mailbag, and one of the questions was, hey, Titus, can you create your Frankenstein um, college basketball program? And now when you think of Frankenstein, the first thing you think of is... There we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, that's... Um, 
And so what does that mean? Okay, for us, we boil it down to, and this is stealing straight from One Shining Podcast, um, but it's such a great idea that we wanted to do it also now that it's college basketball season. What we boiled it down to was, well, this is what we were deciding on, and we're creating from these uh, subjects. Location and campus, recruiting, coach, fans, the, the, the program's pedigree. Culture. Their culture, sure. Um, the atmosphere in the arena. So that's so the atmosphere, the arena, the facilities that all goes into one. Um, the band and the cheerleaders is combined into one. The conference they play in, their mascot, their uniforms, and then we have to put academics in there just because that matters. But um, yeah, so let's let's start with let's go academics because that's not super fun. I think like a good a good one would be like maybe like a Texas. Like it's not mm. super hard to get into, but like a. Yeah, it's definitely has good academics. That's a good. I think Texas is kind of on par with Ohio State as well. Obviously, we're not going to answer Ohio State for all of them. Texas yeah. is a good one. I think, but Texas we could use for location, so we have to like true. But if you're if you're a really really smart kid, Northwestern's education. But Northwestern has limitations to who they can take, so we don't want that. So you see where That's this true. is coming yeah. in. We're, yeah, like we're not. So this is kind of like when I told Titus like the Julio basketball theory. Like Julio was the best player. Like obviously we're not counting. Yeah, Harvard. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're yeah, you're considering certain certain aspects more than others. So okay, all right. All right so, so then, so then you you te- think in Texas, Texas, UT Austin, Texas, that's, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Well, would I be like a good Wisconsin one. a lot too. Yeah, so. Wisconsin would be a good one. All right, let's go Wisconsin. Let's go Big Ten. All right, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Should I write this down? Yeah, write it down. All right, academics. Uh, we got Wisconsin. Okay, um, let's go. Let's okay. Since we kind of already talked about it a little bit, we'll go location slash campus. So I've seen some awesome campuses. Is there anything? That you have in mind. We don't want, like, Chicago or L.A. We don't want to be in a city, I don't think, right? Like, mm. maybe close to a city, but have a city feel. That's my opinion. What about uh, Ann Arbor? Academics, though. Michigan would be yeah. another really good Yeah, one. but we're but doing Wisconsin yeah, because... We Wisconsin. Yeah. It's still, they're still laughing. They're still laughing. <laughs> such a good joke. Um, what do you think? I think because... Let's use Texas, then. Because okay. UT Austin is incredible. The weather's great. The campus is awesome. Mm-hmm. It's it's a city, but it's not like you're not living – like it's not like DePaul. You're not living in the city of Chicago. Yeah. I think like that's a good one. That might even be the One Shining Podcast one. Yeah, Columbia, Missouri is a great town. Um, no, that's – Bias, not. but – Well, I, so is – well, Ohio State's campus is great because you're not in Columbus. It's like its own right. little city, but it's I do, huge. So I, like I, that, I like that. I like that. And Austin. the weather's not great. Is Nashville too big? I don't know. Vanderbilt's good. It's just that's a little small, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, and they don't have a ton of like. I've never I, been. there. I mean, so downtown Nashville is in, is incredible, but I think it's too big of a city for it to be. But it's not in Nashville, is it? Yeah, Vanderbilt is in Nashville. Oh, okay, that matters. Okay, yeah. I, think, I think I think we can settle on Austin. You, okay, you too. There's so, there's so many good that's, ones. That's good. I mean, Wisconsin's I, another. Good, Madison's another good. But one. it's All cold. Those, but it's freezing. So true. That matters. Hmm. Texas, I think, is perfect. Let's try to come up with at least one other one. Well, why? We're making it, we're like, making at least it's make it... Uh, all right, fine. Texas. <laughs> Texas. So, Austin. If we think of something else, we'll we'll go back to it. Yeah. What do you want to do next? Um, should we put recruiting and coach sure. together? Yeah. You, yeah. Okay. Sure. So, recruiting and coaches, we're putting that together. Uh, the one I'll throw this out there. The One Shining Podcast one was Tony Bennett. I'm going to ixnay that all, and we're picking Chris Holtman. Okay. We don't have a choice. Fine. Holtman. Second. It's fine? Okay. Yeah. Because fair. I mean, Holtman is getting that we had the number one recruiting class in the Big Ten. He's awesome. I know from experience. He's a great, great coach and person, and that matters. So in the family atmosphere, like it's just it's I think awesome. I think it's a great time to beat Ohio State Buckeye. I think if you're if you're taking your heart out of it, I would probably say Izzo. That's a great one too. Yeah. So uh, Izzo, uh, that's the only other person. Me and my dad talk about this all the time. Even like my high school coaches. Like I used to always say like Obviously, I want to go to Ohio State and play for Coach Mata, but if I could play for anyone else, it would be Izzo, and that's there's literally zero question about it. I it's it's tough fact. to not say it's tough to not say like Coach K. Obviously, no, it's not, but, but it's not that hard. That's the top of that's like that's different. Yeah, like Roy Will. That's different. Right, it's different. Ooh, uh, North Carolina is another good city. That's a good one too. Yeah. All right. Well, 
but we want to save North Carolina for something else. Okay. Because so we'll, we'll do Holtman. Why don't we do Holtman slash Izzo? Because sure. we can do yeah, two yeah, answers yeah. with that. All right, Holtman Holt. slash Izzo. Even though Holtman is our Holtman is the is the answer, but Izzo, if we didn't, if we weren't Ohio State podcast, would True. also be a consideration. True. All right, um, fans. What do you think? You I played think, in some crazy arenas. I think fans wise, two two fan bases stand out. Purdue. That's mm-hmm. but that's like if we're talking in arena fans, which I think is a different. That's a different thing. So, but Purdue. But Kentucky, yeah. their fans like would die for their players, which not saying that other guys wouldn't or other fan bases wouldn't. Kentucky's the easy answer, though. Again, I think that's what One Shining Podcast used, and especially because we just interviewed Reeks, which you guys are going to hear in a little bit. He like they Kentucky basketball is their religion. Like I think if Alabama was good at basketball consistently, wow, shoot, we could use Ohio State football as our fans. I mean, like. Right. Well, I, I'm saying we're not going to use fo- like I think. Let's use LSU. Go Tigers! I think. Go Tigers! I think Kentucky <laughs> basketball is the equivalent as Alabama football fans wise. Yeah, I agree. If we were doing football, we'd probably pick Alabama. Okay, so basketball though, Kentucky. Let's, yeah, it's too Kentucky. It's just too easy. It's, it's too, too easy. That's what one Chinese podcast used too, but they would die on the sword for them. Like yeah. So okay. All right. So that can we let's go to let's go to arena now because arena and atmosphere and stuff like that. All right. Purdue is the easy answer, but let's not do Purdue. I want to do um, – okay, so if we're factoring in facilities too, that matters too. It's just so hard because Purdue is – I got a good one. Okay, go ahead. Fog Allen Fieldhouse. It's a great answer. Apparently, it, if apparently it's like you're in a museum though when you're in there. Yeah, that's true. Do that you could want be, that? Do You can't touch anything. Exactly. I, it's so hard. It's so hard. I think Purdue is a great answer. Fog Allen's a great answer. Michigan State is a great answer. Yeah. Virginia is one of the craziest atmospheres I've ever been in. Um, we could use Virginia, but I don't. What about what I about know. Duke? I, you know, they, that's that's a fans. small arena. That's more fans yeah. than it is arena. I think. Oh, oh, this is hard. Why don't we go? Why don't we go? Fog Allen, move out of the Big yeah, Ten. Yeah, sure. At least fuck Fog Allen Field us. We, we don't really know what their facilities are like. I'm sure they're great. You know what? We'll do that because they have a basketball player dorm with, yeah, a, with a court so in it. Yeah, which is so cool. Yeah. So that's got to be cheating, too. All right. Fog Allen Fieldhouse. Yep. Okay. Um, it's P-H-O-G. I know. <laughs> that's what I was typing. Beware of the fog. All that heed. That's the coolest thing ever, Ooh, too. the fog. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. What do we got next? Should we do... Conference? ACC, okay. They you get the most teams in the tournament. Easy, or you could pick like a Missouri Valley one or of those WCC and, and play Gonzaga every year and be the two best. Right, teams you're in walking the year. into the tournament every year if no. you're in one of those. I like ACC just because if you're bringing Izzo and Holtman's recruiting to <laughs> one of those teams, no, but walking you got to look at it like this. We want our we want to be battle tested and ready to go when the tournament comes, and that the best place to do that is probably the Big Ten or the ACC. All right, so let's do ACC. All right, ACC. All right, conference ACC. Mascot. Um, Michigan State. No, I that's mean, what they used. That's what they used in the, in the other one. Yeah, we don't want to copy them. We can't completely. copy all of them because they're they did have great answers. Other great mascots. Brutus is a great mascot. Benny the Bull, which isn't a college, great mascot. True. Um, we could do like I mean, funny mascots, like the Western Kentucky mascot is. But he doesn't do anything. Is the Stanford one still a tree? Let's just do Stanford. The big, big. It looks like a recycled tree. Is it still a tree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, still yeah. do that. Why wouldn't it be? Yeah. Penn State's guys. I know you don't They're like terrible. Penn State, but that. Oh no, the worst uh, BYU. BYU. The oh, guy BYU. that does the dancing. Yeah, let's do. Let's yeah, BYU. BYU. There. The BYU Cougar. What's yeah. his name? I'll look it up. Coogie. <laughs> I'll look it up right now. The BYU mascot name. He is Cosmo, Cosmo the Cougar. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, Cosmo, Cosmo the, the Cougar, Cougar is our mascot. What are they? Just curious. What do? What are mm. they? <laughs> what are the, What are the other mascots that they have that p- other people search for? Go up, go up, go up. Um, people also search for. Oh, the Oregon, Oregon duck, duck is awesome. Syracuse Orange. Oh, Wait. LSU. Mark the Tiger. Go Tigers. Wait, we need to do Cosmo the Cougar slash Oregon Duck. All He's right. awesome. Fine. Cosmo the Cougar. He's the best. Um, he is the best ESPN uh, commercial. ESPN. Yeah, exactly. Cosmo when they're the quacking cougar. and he's like, oh, I gotta <laughs> work. I'm a duck. I have to work. Cosmo the Cougar, Oregon Duck. Um, what else do we want to do? Let's do. Uh, hmm. 
uniforms. Wait, atmosphere. We'll do atmosphere goes with arena and facilities. Let's change that. Sorry, just a little housekeeping. Uniforms. Let's um, – here, I'm doing it for you. Put atmosphere with arena and facilities. I just think like that all goes okay. together kind yeah. of, you know. Um, uniforms. Easy answer is Carolina blue. I like Oregon too. But Oregon's – they do too much. Okay. They're like, oh, look at me, look at me. I like Arizona's. Playing Arizona's. Ooh, UCLA baby blue is really good. But then good. you have to be Adidas or Under Armour. That's even worse. They're really cool though. Lonzo, Lonzo Ball in that baby blue. Yeah, no, no. Hits it's differently. No, you're right. Kentucky has pretty good uniforms, too. Yeah. Uh, this one's tough. Um, hmm. What else? I'm just thinking of all the teams. Oklahoma's got some cool ones because they're Jordan. They're Jordan. That might be it. No, but... No, they're not. God, UCLA's are so cool. I know, but they're Under Armour. That's terrible. <sighs> uh, we're a Nike podcast. True. Um, This is dragging on. we got to pick one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. I'm thinking. Um... Okay, let me think. We'll go to the. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to it. The, the Finalists are UCLA. Well, North no, Carolina. we unless something else. Comes we'll think up. of another one, maybe. Um, band slash Duke has great uniforms too. Yeah, but I'm taking. I'm. I'm telling you, I'm taking UCLA over Duke. I don't know. Do you know Duke gets? But Duke has gray, black, white. Yeah, those blue. black ones are cool. They have all. Memphis's are pretty cool too. Memphis does have cool uniforms. Should we pick one specific uniform? Because if we're picking one specific, if we're picking uniform, one specific uniform, then I'm 100 <laughs> percent taking UCLA baby blue. No, I th- let's go. I kind of want to do Duke. They have so many options. Nike loves them. They get all this crazy all right, stuff. Let's do Duke. Just because Duke don't know, uniforms. What would what would Frankenstein be without Duke and for yeah, college basketball? Exactly. And then cheerleaders and band, which is basically just a wraparound way for us to to say cheerleaders. Yeah. Um. Dallas Cowboys. Not college basketball team. Oh, shit. I'll tell you, underrated Minnesota. They have gr- they have a great dance team. Uh-huh. They're really good. Really good dance team. Um, as players, it is important to go on the road and focus solely on the game and not the distractions that surround the game, i.e. band members, student sections, definitely not cheerleader dance team. That's not what I'm talking about at all. So... I never really got to see any when I was on the road, but... I got a good one for you. Yeah. Mizzou. I'll take your word for it. They you have, throw Mizzou on there? They have cheerleaders. They have the Golden Girls, which is the dance team. Do they throw the flags and stuff? Yeah. Do they got flag spinners? Yeah. Okay. And, um, they have a, and they have a good band. All right. And Mizzou it's right is. in the student what, section. What would a Frankenstein for college basketball be without Mizzou? Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mizzou, band, and cheerleaders. Pedigree. I think... I I think it's North Carolina. But what about like UCLA? But but North Carolina, well, I guess they have the academic scandal yeah. looming right now. I'm trying to think of someone that's like Virginia. But they just won. Yeah, they just won. No scandals. Tony Bennett. But I'm thinking more of like a Sure. Fine, fine. Indiana. I don't, you know, I don't like Indiana. I think Virginia. This is Indiana. Yeah, yeah we, we do it big. big. Welcome to the big. Uh, this is IU. Something you, about Tom you. Creed. He's not there. <laughs> um, I think I think Virginia. Virginia, sure, fine. All right, I mean, so. shoot. What's the the best pedigree is that we won last year? So yeah. So this is our this is our Frankenstein. We have. So we are located. Sitting, you're well, sitting at your house. Okay. Yeah. You're sitting at your house. And Coach Holtman. Walks in with Tom Izzo. And here's what he says to you. He says, hey, Billy. Well, I'll pitch it to you right now, Andrew, okay? Right. So, hey, Andrew. Uh, it's Coach Holman here. Uh, obviously, you know Coach Izzo as well. Uh, we're coming from the University of Joey Lane. Um, we are here um, pitching you our beautiful, beautiful campus. It actually uh, relies um, – it's it's located in Texas and Austin, um, a beautiful, beautiful campus – um, you'll notice that we have one of the best arenas, facilities, with a great atmosphere, uh, Fog Allen Fieldhouse. So uh, you'll be able to play in front of some of the greatest fans in the country, the Kentucky fans, um, <laughs> which will they will be so awesome, uh, and they will be with you every move you make. Um, but we also set you up great in the future. Our academics come straight from Madison, Wisconsin, and, was, and the, the University of Wisconsin, um, where um, you will get a great education along with becoming a great basketball player. Um, not only that, we are uh, in the Athletic Coast Co- or 
what is it? Atlantic, Atlantic Coastal, Atlantic Coast, Conference. Coastal Conference, where we will be playing some of the best teams in the country week in and week out. And um, frankly, we get the most bids in the country every single year. Um, and if you want to talk about some of the other stuff, you know, we have a great dance team. Mizzou is, they really get it done. I have, I've heard is, of the Golden Girls. Yeah, exactly. The okay. Golden Girls. Um, not only that, though, we have an awesome mascot. Um, whether it's Cosmo the Cougar or the Oregon Duck, you can pick and choose whether which one you want each game. Andrew, we'll let you decide which one you want. Um, but if you if you come on an official visit, we'd be happy to get you set up in some of our Duke uniforms so you can take some pictures and post them on social media. So what do you have to say about that? I like what you have to offer. You just need ten thousand dollars in next, your end. <laughs> but next fall, I'll be taking my talents to Columbus, Ohio to play for the Ohio State University. Guys, that was just a big, long-winded segment to tell you that the Frankenstein of college <laughs> basketball relies in Columbus, Ohio, baby. Coming up next, our interview with Beanie Wells. One of our favorite interviews. Dude's Hopefully awesome. It'll be one of your favorites, too. Buckle up and drive the lane. We now welcome on to the Drive the Lane podcast the co-host of Beanie and the Boom. That's not why you know him. Beanie Wells, Ohio State legend. Welcome on to the show. How are we doing today? Doing pretty good, man. Just uh, watching some, some college football. Or sorry, not college football, NFL football. Um, and just hanging out. You know, just hanging out at home right now. How's everything with you guys? Uh, not bad. You know, got to see my Browns win today, which I saw you tweeting about, which was Felt indeed, pretty good. Indeed. <laughs> and my and my Bears won. So this is the first time me and Andrew are actually recording um, a podcast where both our teams won on Sunday. So we're pretty oh, juiced man, up about sure. that. For sure. <laughs> and and we're pretty happy because the Buckeyes pulled out a close one yesterday. I was a little nervous there at the end when they cut it to seventy three fourteen, but <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> thankfully they pulled away. Exactly. <laughs> so we'll 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 jump in right to it with that. What are your thoughts on the Buckeyes this season? It's been incredible. You know, it's been a unique season um, and, and unique for a number of reasons. But when you really look at it with you know how we played last year, specifically on the defensive end, to what we're looking like now with the exact same players, and all we did was switch a couple of coaches. I mean, it, it, it's it's incredible to, to see these new coaches come in and be able to get the best out of these players and put them in the best position to be successful. And, uh, I think right now we're watching and enjoying playing together. Uh, and I think that's attributed to Ryan Day and his staff. Are you, uh, are you close with any of the guys on the team this year? No, not, not close with any of them, but I have been over there a couple of times. You know, I've spoken to uh, JK and, and Chase Young and earlier uh, part of the preseason and the coaches staff. And uh, they're just a, a solid group of individuals, man. And, you know, all high character guys. So uh, I'm excited about him, and I'm excited about, about him the rest of the way. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I would grew up an Ohio State football fan. Um, obviously, that tripled when I came to uh, came to Ohio State. But this has been the most fun I've had watching a team play. I think since that national championship um, just a few years ago. Do you think it's safe to say that it's a national championship or bust now? Oh, without question. When you look at this team, you look at how they stack up and how impressive they've been all year long, I think that that's, that's only right. <laughs> I mean, when you go out and you dominate uh, Wisconsin like we did, and we just pretty much dominate everybody uh, that we line up against. And you look at how far in advance we are on the offensive side of the football with the first-year quarterback and essentially a first-year head coach. Um, yeah, I think it's boom or bust. Uh, and I, I think we're going to be on the end of that boom. Oh, without a doubt. Do you think uh... – um, even with LSU winning last night in an incredible game, you think Ohio State stays at number one in the college football playoff? Or do you think they slide to two? You know, they probably slide to two, but I don't really, I don't really care what it looks like right now. I won't go up there in the upper echelon. Um, if we're in that top four, that means we're doing something right. We can shuffle away around throughout the rest of the way. But, uh, you know, I think Ohio State is going to be there at the end of the day. But with that game, with that being said, I mean, when you watch LSU go out and pretty much dominate Alabama, the way that they did, I think people are going to give that game more credence than uh, any game that Ohio State had. Is Alabama the scariest team for you if, if we had to face them in the playoff? Alabama or LSU? LSU. What did I say? You said Bama. LSU. Uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's see, okay. He's a basketball okay. guy. Yeah, you knew what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, LSU really doesn't scare me that much. Uh, when you look at them, 
Uh, yeah, they could do some great things on the offensive side of the ball. But defensively, they looked good versus Alabama. Uh, but I don't think Alabama's offense is as good as our offense collectively. Um, and then when you look at, you know, some of the things that they play, you know, the, the Floridas, uh, they played Texas earlier part of the year. Texas almost came back. There's two more minutes left in our football game. You know, it may have been a different outcome. Um, so, yeah, they, they don't really scare me on the defense side of the football, and I think that's where Ohio State will have the advantage because our offense is, uh, I think, lightning is better than anyone in the country. I agree with you. Who am I right now? We went into Tuscaloosa. We played a good game. Joe Burrow played well. Go Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Coach O. <laughs> so, Joey, Joey said that uh, this is the most fun he's had watching Buckeye football since that national championship team. I think it's the most fun watching Buckeye football since 2007 when a young Beanie Wells was running for 1,600 yards and 15 touchdowns. That um, was an exciting season. It, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing you remember the stats off the top of your head. Yeah, d- we definitely don't have the stats pulled up. That was <laughs> straight off the top of my head. You, uh, you were, of course, an Ohio State legend, but... You don't have one crazy stat that seems impossible. Carlos Hyde never not having a negative rush his senior year. Did you ever think that could be done in a season? No, I didn't know that. I did not know that at all. That's incredible. Yeah, I'm 99% sure that that's true. It's all right. When my senior year oh my in, in college, I didn't have a negative rush either. So. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you see that stat at? I didn't know that was like kept. That has to be off the top of your head. That That is off the top of my head. That is just something that I've known for years. It might be a Urban Meyer legend, but <laughs> but I'm I'm 99% sure that that is a true stat. But something that I've wondered, something that we've wondered for years at the Drive the Lane podcast, where does the nickname Beanie come from? So Beanie originated... Um, for my older brother. He gave me that nickname because I was a skinny, linky kid with a big bean head and he bobbled, essentially. And he called me Beanie. Have you ever been to the Bean in Chicago? Yes, I have. Absolutely. I got a picture of that. I need to post right. it. Yeah, you better <laughs> you have got, a picture of that. You got to post it and say, <laughs> hashtag Beanie at the Bean. <laughs> right. <laughs> you and you and Boom should do a live show from the Bean. <laughs> Beanie and Boom at the Bean. <laughs> oh. have a time, man. <laughs> if only the bean was in Indy, because obviously the Bucks are going to Indy this year. Could have been. Oh man, it's just too easy. You yeah. know, there's a bean in Houston, oh, Texas. Ooh, yeah. So, but that doesn't really matter either. There's a there's a bean. Um, they call it like a like a mirror cloud or something like that's the technical um name that the, like the artist uses or whatever. They have another one uh-huh. in Houston, but the one in Chicago gets all the love, rightfully so, because Chicago's. You know, a f- superior city. Just Chicago, Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, we'll we'll get back we'll get back on track from this year's Buckeye team. Is there a player that you really like to watch that you're like, God, I love when that guy has the ball in his hands, or I love when <laughs> that guy makes a big play, big tackle. I think it's J.K. Dobbins. You know, me being a running back, I always want to know how those guys are going to do. And uh, you know, when he has the ball in his hands, man, he's just incredible. He's always, uh, you know, creating. And creating big opportunities, and you know, we're watching him this year and just be more patient than he was last year. And things are opening up for him tremendously. But when you watch him get to the second level, uh, he's a violent runner for as small as he is. I, mean, I love it. Every time he gets the ball, it's just you hold your breath because you know it's capable of being a big boy. You think he will end up the all-time leading rusher in Ohio State history when it's all said and done? See, the reason why he won't is because I don't know if he'll come back next year. You know, you're a running back and you get slated probably, I don't know, you know, second, first round. I think you got to go. Um, I, I, there's just no way. He's able to catch Archie. I think Archie's like 52, 55 hundred yards at this point. Um, there's no way he'd be able to catch him unless he came back. Now, he would be the closest individual uh, and the best odds he did come back to because Archie in the all-time record. Um, what's your school history? But I don't see him coming back after this season. Yeah, I mean, especially if they add a uh, a ring to this season. Exactly. Knock or two. Knock on wood. Two. Knock on wood. But, yeah, he's he's a little too dominant to come back for a fourth year. Similar to you, who got drafted 31st first-round pick. You squeezed into that first round. Need the first-round pick. Just squeezed in. <laughs> uh, 
I, I told one of my friends, I was like, you know, uh, Beanie's coming on our podcast, and he was like, well, please tell him thank you for winning me that one fantasy football matchup. I think he's talking about the game, I think it was against the Rams when you had like 80 yards and three touchdowns. You remember that game? Oh, man. No, I, I do, I do. But uh, <laughs> I told him I apologize for the rest of the years because I probably didn't get him anything <laughs> else. <laughs> did, you talk, did you talk to fans a lot about their fantasy team and, and whether they were thanking you or saying, come on, man, you got to pick it up? I, I didn't. I didn't at all. Uh, you know, I used to get the craziest messages on Twitter of uh, from crazy fans, you know, going nuts uh, when I didn't get them any fantasy points and they had Jackson and high. But, you know, uh, I really didn't understand fantasy at the time, but now I understand it. Now I'm like pissed off a certain guy that's going to give you the right, right fantasy points. Right. So I, I, I get it and feel the pain now. Yeah, totally. It's so funny because being a walk on, obviously it's not literally fantasy football, but being a walk on, anything that happens, um, in the game, the fans love you. If you turn it over, they're like, oh, that's so cute. If you make a shot, they go nuts. So right. I had the beauty of whenever I went in the game, people loved it. Whereas for you, especially for fantasy football, you get the love-hate relationship, clearly. They just, they'd just only love oh, you for 100%. your stats. It's not fair. <laughs> that is it. It's even not to the point now, man, where you see people, you know, they used to have these teams that they were just diehard fans of. It's no longer that way. You know, people are more so fans of the individual. And I think that's due in part to, to fantasy football. Oh, yeah. I mean, I told you I was a Bears fan. I don't, I still don't draft Packers players. So, like, that's like kind of the reverse. <laughs> like, I don't want to have to root for a Packers player. But at the same time, like, I've fallen in love with Christian McCaffrey this year because he's been my fantasy workhorse. So it's, it's funny you right. say that because, like, I've become the biggest fan of his strictly because of fantasy. And it's totally individual success. Like, I want him to do well. But now, like, even next year, like, I, might not, I haven't played fantasy football in, like, six years. It's the first time, like, I I remember, like, Keenan Allen, like, my sophomore year in high school was awesome. So I've always been a fan of his. So it's just, like, it's funny how that works. Like, I think you're spot on for sure. No doubt. Is there a Ohio State running back group text that once you graduate or leave for the draft you get added to that's, like, Zeke, Hyde, you, all the legends, or, or nothing like no, that? No, no, no. I'm excited to get something like that going. Um, uh, I am in a group chat with Keith Byers, uh, but it's not like all Ohio State running back. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, we probably do need to get something like that going, man, to where you know, we all stay in touch with each other. Yeah, that'd be cool. Maybe you could uh, add me to it so I can <laughs> say what's up to everyone. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm Andrew. Right. I ran for 17 yards my freshman year in high school. <laughs> um, it wasn't good enough to go to college, wasn't good enough to go to the NBA, but I love Ohio State, so. It's nice to meet you guys. That's how that text would go. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> when we when we had uh, Tyvis Powell on, he told us a kind of untold story about Cardale Jones shooting Terry McLaurin with a paintball gun. Got to ask you: Do you have any untold Ohio State stories that are safe enough for our airways? Yes, I do. Um, and this happened. And this been made public. And had we had we had Facebook at the time. Facebook was just getting started, and it was actually only for college students. So everybody didn't have Facebook, right? Um, so had this happened at this time here, I probably would have never. I mean, it would be Ohio State. So I'm, I'm hanging out with a couple of, uh, of teammates of mine, and you know I was this big jokester, and I was I was always doing something stupid. It was funny to me, but probably not funny to everybody else. Uh, so we're at this girl's house, hanging out. And all of a sudden, one of my teammates is laying on the floor, and I want to mess around. I take the fire extinguisher out the hallway of the apartment, and I spray the entire house um, with the fire extinguisher. And I spray my teammate, and I spray the girl. And, oh my gosh, so she pissed. Um, <laughs> she, ended up, <laughs> she ended up calling the police. She ended up calling the police, and the police, I didn't believe it at the time, but the police ended up calling me. They were like, what happened here? Oh, I was. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I was just joking around. I didn't know what that is. So what I ended up doing was going back, cleaning it up, and all was well. But had that happened this day and age with social media and all that stuff, it would have been the worst thing ever for me. I probably wouldn't keep up the team. <laughs> Breaking news: <laughs> Beanie Wells sprays a girl with a <laughs> with a with a fire extinguisher. Indefinite oh, suspension. Man, was, yes, she she only called the police because I didn't clean it up. So I sprayed her and my teammate and, and, and the floors and all that and just clean it up. And I, I was getting stupid. 
Like, I was just laughing my way out the door. But end up, be, uh, end up going back and getting that stuff up. You know, <laughs> I did not want to get in any trouble. It's funny you talking about fire signature. That's something that... W- as a kid, like we learned how to do it in school, I've never had to use a fire extinguisher, but now I think I will as a prank. So I appreciate the idea. <laughs> it, it, it's hell to say that. I think that much. Like, we're gonna easy. we're gonna be in uh, Columbus for the Penn State game. We'll figure out where we're gonna meet up and get drinks with you in a little bit. But uh, <laughs> we're gonna be there for the Penn State game, and Joey's gonna spray someone with a, with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> be like, oh, it's just a and, prank, like my friend. And the cops Joey. are gonna be like, "What are you doing? That's illegal!" And he's gonna be like, "Beanie Wells told me that <laughs> it's, a, it's a fun prank to spray someone with a fire extinguisher." <laughs> What about what about what about on the field? Any any good stories from a, a an on the field point of view? Oh man, on the field point of view doesn't have to be untold. Could just be like a memory that you're like, God, that was awesome. Oh man, you know what was crazy is we're playing the one versus two game. Um, you know, versus a State versus two thousand six. I remember running out the, the tunnel and I, I get down and I look to my right and I see. Uh, Derek Jeter hanging out on the sideline. <laughs> I look further down. I see Charles and the Then I look further down. I think I want to say it was Madonna down there. Dude. It was like a who's who. And I went back up to the tunnel and I go to one of my boys. And I'm like, you see who's down there at all at, all, at his game? I couldn't believe it, man. That was, you know, one of those like surreal moments. And you kind of understood how big the rivalry was and how uh, impactful it was all across the freaking world. And you had these type of celebrities just hanging out of the sideline in Ohio Stadium. Well, now it explains why Madonna was covered in fire extinguisher after that game. <laughs> <laughs> she was the culprit. She was the one that spray. <laughs> That's I, <laughs> I. The only thing I got from that story is I still have no idea why or how Derek Jeter is a Michigan fan. Is he from Detroit or something? Like, Do you have any I idea have why no he's a Michigan clue. fan? Did he just choose it? That's not that. fair. You can't just choose. I never understood it. I never got to the bottom of it. Yeah. That's that's pretty Derek Jeter's one of the most overrated baseball players of all time, too. But that's Ooh, a different, now different story. Look oh at the stats. So now we're giving hot takes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that, that one ver- verse two game was crazy when you were a freshman and had 576 yards, seven touchdowns, two receptions for 16 yards on the season. That was a crazy season. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed it was, man. man Andrew, your show. memory is off the charts. So, <laughs> so now that you're – you talked about watching, you know, NFL football a little bit at the beginning. What do Sundays look like for you in terms of NFL? Say that, say that one more time, I'm sorry. I lost it. In terms of like NFL and watching football, what's a typical Sunday look like for you now that you're no longer playing? Oh, man, I'm getting up in the morning. I'm going to get some food. I'm going to run with the kids. But by 1 o'clock, I got to be at home. I'm not missing any games. I got my NFL package, and I'm just laying around. With the exception of today, I had to do an event earlier. Um, that kind of you know derailed me from watching all the games. But normally, I'm watching everything. And I'm just looking back and forth, just hanging out. Sundays are my relaxed days, and I think I'm right now, you know, laying on the couch watching the game and talking to you guys. So, is there any team that you have a particular rooting interest in these days? Oh, well, Browns. Yeah. I'm uh, Even though, uh, you know, it hasn't been pretty, and it's been ugly as of late, but, you know, I grew up a Browns fan, and I'm still loyal. Did you ever play against the Browns? I did. I did. I actually beat the Browns when I was in Arizona. You beat the Browns? No one beats the Browns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like 2010 or so. How many uh, how many yards did you have? He probably had 126, three touchdowns, four receptions for 82 yeah, yards. I think I had like 50 in a touchdown or something like that. Been crazy. In oh. Cleveland? No, no, no. I was in Arizona. Oh. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna call you out for something right now. All right. On January 9th, 2019, Beanie Wells, Cleveland Browns got it right with the Freddie Kitchens hire. How do you feel now? No, it's not looking like. Really, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty cool guy, super cool dude. Wait, we uh, uh we we lost we lost we lost you for a second. Let's let's rewind that. All right, January <laughs> January 2019, Beanie Wells, Cleveland Browns got it right with the Freddie Kitchens hire. How do we feel now? We don't feel good about it. <laughs> do not feel good whatsoever about it. Um. 
Freddie's a, a, a good person. Um, I liked him when he was the his coach when I was in Arizona. Um, but he it, it just really doesn't have the experience and call of plays and, and, and managing an entire football team. Uh, I don't think that's something you ask a uh, movie to do when you got a, a new situation to where you got a young quarterback and you got a bunch of new pieces to the puzzle that you're trying to get to play together and, and try to get the motivated team. Um, I, I don't think he was the right guy. So recently on Twitter, it seems like people are – they're not turning on Baker – I'm a big Baker guy. Obviously, I was a walk-on, so me and Baker have that, you know, unspoken bond or whatever. But um, I'm st- as an outsider to the Browns world, I'm still I'm okay with Baker. I'm excited about him still. Where Where do you stand? Because it seems like people are slowly turning on him. I'm turning on Baker. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. I, I like him. Baker still has a good and I think that's what you know. We're, we're Browns fans, so obviously we want instant gratification. We want to see. Uh, him to you know be accurate, be the franchise guy right now. And we'll forget that he's only in his second year. Uh, he he does still have time to grow, still has a lot of room for Um But I think you know the thing that gets a lot of people kind of you know irking about him is you know the way he kind of comes off of I don't know whether it's like ultra confident arrogance, uh, but I, I think that's one of the things that probably rubs a lot of people the wrong way is the way he comes off. But he does have room for improvement. I'm not jumping entirely off the bandwagon. Yeah, I think if you're talking about Baker and his his cockiness or his confidence, whatever you want to call it, I think quarterback is arguably the hardest position to play in sports. And if you don't have that certain swag, then you can't really be super successful. So I feel like he's got to just, you know, mold that into the right way. Like, it, it is weird when he is in all these progressive commercials and all this stuff, like, um, and he hasn't really done anything. And I'm sure that would be frustrating, especially – um, if you were like maybe his his teammate, you're like, dude, let's focus on football type of deal. But well, um, I think I, I think I'm with you in terms of let's not hop off the bandwagon. I, Andrew's our resident Browns fan. Are you hopping off the bandwagon? I was a <clears throat> I was a red zone interception today away from hopping off the bandwagon. <laughs> but they they kept me for a little bit. It was nice to see uh, Higgins get on the field. For some reason, he's locked up on the sidelines this year. What do you? Why do you think Higgins hasn't seen the field besides one play today uh, where he had a touchdown? I, mean, I think he's the number thing in the world. Last year he was one of our better receivers, um, and, and he created opportunity. I think, you know, a lot of times when you're a new coach and you get a bunch of new pieces and they look shiny and pretty, you want to test them out and, you know, try to figure out all these creative ways uh, to get other guys to football instead of just getting out there where it works. And last year he was a guy that worked. Um, I think moving forward, you know, he'll be a guy that we we'll probably see on the field more. Any chance you're going to be there Thursday night? No, no, not at all. Nope. All right, I'll, I'm going to be there. I'll send you some. Uh, I'll, I'll FaceTime you. <laughs> all right, <laughs> better work. Before before we get off the Baker comment, I so being a being a Bears fan, everyone talks about Mahomes and Watson could have been drafted instead of Trubisky. Um, I'm posing to you: should, Did the Browns make a mistake and they should have drafted Lamar Jackson? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so I thought that. I mean, I thought Lamar Jackson. I mean, hell, he won a higher trophy. I saw the Baker, but I mean, I, I just thought he was such a so much more dynamic than, than Baker. You know, I thought he should have been the first quarterback draft. And I know, I think it was with the thirty second pick or thirty first pick somewhere in there. I know there's a bunch of other teams that are pissed off that they didn't grab him and let him pass up. So he's so freaking good. Is only going to be uh, better down the line. You're just saying that because he's a fellow 31st pick. <laughs> <laughs> he was the last nah, pick. Nah, I think he was literally yeah. the last pick. So yeah, so you I'll should like show him. no love for that. <laughs> so so are, you, are you hearing anything on the Chase Young front? Any news there? No, I really haven't heard anything. Nothing uh, that, that hasn't been up to the public. And everybody else has heard unfortunate situations. It's kind of stupid, in my opinion, uh, especially you know, when it was paid back and it was somebody on which he, he had known um, before he came to Ohio State. And, I mean, we're not talking about it being from an agent or some marketing person or nothing like that. Or we're not even talking about it was a, a loan in excess of $10,000 or anything like that. And we're talking about, you know, I'm going to get somebody probably to, 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 to what, to buy his girlfriend a flight and then to maybe go to dinner or whatever. And it's something simple. Uh, I think it's stupid that the NCAA put these parameters and these structures uh, around these guys, and you don't allow them to go out and do something that any other student would, would want or could get rather. 
Has he heard of uh, Southwest Airlines? Because they have like a hundred thirty dollar <laughs> Cleveland to or Columbus to L.A. flights. That that wouldn't have been an expensive flight at all. What? <laughs> So, I, man, who, I, who knows? Who knows the deal? I'm hoping. Yeah, hell, I hope it's only one game and it's been it. And it shouldn't take as long for those guys to come to a decision, especially when they already said that. You know what? We're going to allow these guys to capitalize off name and like this. And you know, when you open up that door and say you're going to do it in the future, why not just allow something when it's as minuscule as it is right now to just you know pass by, especially when we know he paid them back. Yeah, the good thing is, is um, you know, Ryan Day already came out and said he's going to practice all week. So even if the verdict um, is changed to just a one-game suspension on Friday, like he'll be ready to go on Saturday. So um, at least he'll be you know in shape and, and ready to roll. I'm, I bet it'll be like a two-game suspension just because that'll make it seem like it's like it's more than nothing. But then also it really won't hurt Ohio State at all because who whether he's on the field or not, they're going to win by a hundred points against Rutgers. So we just need him back for for Penn State. So. That's where I bet that's the way the NCAA, um, that's the way they'll look at it. I mean, it's just because maybe that would be a win-win situation for the old men who yell at clouds about, um, you know, kids doing this, these terrible, terrible things like doing what a saxophone player could do at Ohio State. But um, I, I would, I just, I don't know. I, it's so frustrating. I can't stand the NCAA for a million different reasons. How did they suspend the number one player, the number one pick in football and basketball in the same day? That's like. I mean, that's yeah. incredible. Like, that okay. doesn't make any sense at all, man. It's, it's, it's a little ridiculous. And, you know, hopefully, you know, they come to some common ground soon um, and don't string this thing out and they make a decision on him and they're going to make a decision on the future uh, for these individuals, man. So we're not looking at any situation down the line that, you know, these guys are going to, careers are going to be ruined. And I the career ruined. He's going to have a successful career in the National Football League. So is the other kid in the NBA. But, so their opportunity and experience is in ruin in college. That's the last thing that you know I really want for them is to have to look back um, at the time in which they had to deal with the big, big ugly uh, NCAA and, and, and their attitude, and their their reasons for, for sitting by the game. I just don't want that. Uh, they deserve better. They get butts white and tears in practice, um, and they do everything you ask them to do. And these situations are being so unfortunate. Uh huh. I I say this a lot. I think. And you could tell me I'm a complete idiot or crazy for thinking this. So we've had we've had Terry McLaurin on. We've had uh, oh, we lost him for a second. Let me call him back. <laughs> now we're just gonna cut this out anyway, right? So sorry, my my phone is uh just losing signal here. No problem. We we got you back now. We good you. In an elevator yeah, or something? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I live out in the woods, so when I move around my house, it's uh, it gets spacey out here. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> what I was saying is, I think we've had, you know we've had Terry McLaurin on. I've talked about this with Tyvis Powell. You can tell me I'm an idiot for thinking this. I think the Redskins should draft Chase Young. And I think Urban Meyer should go coach in Washington, and he would have Chase Young, Haskins, and Terry McLaurin. What do you think about that? Well, that would be a nice situation. I, I just can't see Urban Meyer. <laughs> yeah, he better not you know, go to the Redskins. Uh, yeah, of all places to go in the NFL, it's probably the last place he's going to go to. Um, <laughs> I, I can't see him coaching uh, you know, with his style and the structure that he, he's had in place and, and wherever he's been. And implement that in the National Football League. I think you would instantly see a Redskins takeover on Ohio State's campus. Jerseys everywhere, fans everywhere. Oh, no question. Yeah. You know they're going to support him 100. But yeah, I I I don't know if we have anything else to talk about. We've we've hit a lot of things. Anything anything you want to talk about that we didn't get to? Any questions you have for us? No, no, man. Congratulations on the podcast, man. Uh, you know, I hope it. Continues to succeed, and you know, uh, welcome to the Letterman World family. Thank you, man. Oh, we're, man it's we're happy great to, to be, be here. here. We'll uh, we'll meet up or do something if you got some time when we're in town for the Penn State game. Sounds good. All right, thanks for coming on, man. Everybody, Appreciate listen you. to Sorry. Beanie and the Boom when you're done listening to this. All right, if you didn't love Beanie Wells before. 
because he was a legend. I'm sure you love him now. Uh, that was an awesome, awesome interview. We had so much fun with him. That will definitely not be the last time you hear from him. But we're also going to waste no time because we know you're not just here for football. You're here for basketball, too, because it is basketball season. So without further ado, here we have Barstool blogger, writer, podcast extraordinaire, Bobby Regan, better known as at Barstool Regs. We now welcome on to the Drive the Lane podcast, Barstool's college basketball insider, podcaster, and genius, <laughs> Barstool Riggs. There we go. Riggs, welcome to the show. How we doing, my man? Thanks, man. Thanks, man. I'm, uh, I'm trying to survive. That's all I can say right now. Wow. That sounds exciting. They- <laughs> Thank God for basketball. Man, thank God for basketball season. Hey, like, I'm, w- I'm with you. Kentucky, Kentucky football is just ripping my heart out. I'm just tr- I'm just trying to like stay positive by saying it's basketball season, which means something bad's going to happen to like Kentucky basketball here soon, or RJ Barrett's going to get hurt on the Knicks. So like, I'm just I just know something bad's going to happen here soon. Wait, I we weren't even going to talk Knicks, but. I saw the other day on Inside the NBA, they asked Charles Barkley, will the Knicks win a championship by 2025? And he said, what the Chuck? No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just one of the safest bets you can make. I would is say that so. the Knicks just will not be successful unless James Dolan dies before 2025. <laughs> they, have a good, they have a good little core, though. They got, you know, R.J. Barrett, Mitchell Robinson, 75 power forwards. They got a good little core. I mean, yeah, like, they... Like the last two drafts, they've done well. Like I think Kevin Knox has been fine. Um, they find Alonzo Trier. Mitchell Robinson is a second round. Trier is an undrafted guy. RJ Barrett looked really good early on. Um, Iggy's still there. You know, we'll see what he turns into. But like their drafts the last two years, shockingly, has been like okay. And I don't know how to react to that. <laughs> yeah, I mean Knox is solid as long as uh, Cullen Van Leer and Jordan Barnett are not guarding him. He should be okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, if we're going to talk a little college basketball, we might as well do it with the best there is. So um, tell us a little bit about Kentucky so far. They they looked pretty good against Michigan State the other day in the in one of the worst first halves ever. Yeah, I mean, that was a weird game. Obviously, like, it, there's a ton of foul calls on, on both sides. Um, and what it kind of showed is what I was kind of preaching to everybody before the season – and why I really, really like this Kentucky roster, there's just so much. A, there's there's a good amount of depth, just not in the front court, like in the sense of traditional bigs. But there's so much roster versatility, right? Like Cal loves to run two two bigs. It's kind of been his mo as much as Kentucky fans don't like the two traditional big set. So he likes to run Montgomery and Richards out there. They get in front, you know, one guy gets in foul trouble. Now Sestina comes in. So as soon as a stretch, that fits a little bit better. He has, you know, you can run Keon Brooks or Khalil Whitney at the four. So I, I just love this roster versatility. He can run three guards because of the, the size and, and length of, you know, Emmanuel Quickly, Tyrese Maxey, and Ashton Hayden. And so he, the fact that he has all this versatility, it's one of the like first times, obviously there was a platoon, which is just different. Um, but it's one of the first times that he's had this sort of depth and versatility from a roster standpoint. And I think that's what you saw against Michigan State was, you know, the moment that Aaron Henry really got in foul trouble. And I know Cassius Winston obviously picked up a couple of early fouls, but the moment Henry had to get taken out of the game and that kind of messed up what what Michigan State wants to do, that's when Kentucky kind of not blew the game open, but extend the lead and, and, and really made it a, a, a comfortable first half for them. I don't know if you can really do that against Kentucky, right? Like, yeah. Because if you, you get Ashton Hagen's in foul trouble, then you just run quickly and, and Max. You get Max in foul trouble, you're in quickly and Hagen's. You get Richards in foul trouble, you run Sistina Montgomery. So it's one of those, like, it, and, and it depends. Like, I don't think there's necessarily a bad lineup as much. My least favorite lineup is when he does do the Montgomery emergency deal. So I think that's sort of what, of what I guess my takeaway is, is this roster versatility is one of the more unique things in the country. 
Where do you think the uh, biggest weakness lies within the team? Um, you know, I, I, I think it is that, that the, the front court and, and the lack of front court, you know, I'm not sold on EJ Montgomery making like this massive jump that we see guys make, you know, you look at PJ Washington last year. I don't think that's going to, you know, I'm not saying it's going to turn into PJ Washington, but that sort of jump. I don't see that really with Montgomery, Nick Richards. I think we just know who Nick Richards is at this point. Um, so it's, it's, I, I think that's the weakness. Uh, if I had to lean one way or another, what uh, outside of Kentucky, you know, it's it's a very young college basketball season so far. We've only seen a couple games from a couple teams. Ohio State two and zero. Are there any surprises or anything that's uh, sticking out to you early on this year? I would just say how open this season kind of feels, right? Like Florida State goes and they lose at Pitt, and then they go and beat Florida. Um, and I think that's kind of going to sum up college basketball. Like nobody really paid attention because it happened on a Saturday night after LSU Alabama, but Texas goes and wins at Purdue. Um, obviously, you have Duke beating Kansas. Kansas not looking great. Uh, I'm not really that impressed by Duke either. It, it, it just opened this year, man. Like it, it, it's it's fun because coming into the year, you know, and it's it's a weird year where yes, like. Obviously, everyone knows kind of like James Wiseman, but the thing about last year and, and years prior, people were talking about the hype of the freshmen, and this year is more like the stars were Cassius Winston, Jordan Norla, Miles Powell, Marcus Howard. How many people know these guys? Like that, right. The casual fans know this many people, and and I think that's kind of cool. It's just a different feeling this year. Yeah, I think that. You know, people were saying that there's a clear-cut number one with Michigan State, but then strictly eye test-wise, like, they don't look like that. But you know that at the end of the day, you, they're going to be in the top five all year. They're going to be considered for the Final Four National Championship all year, regardless of, of how right. of, regardless of how they look. I, I don't know if you've watched them at all tonight, but they're playing Binghamton, and just obviously it's Binghamton, but they look like uh, they look unstoppable. I don't care who they're playing. I, I mean, so obviously we're a Big Ten um podcast you know obviously Ohio State mostly do you have you gotten a chance to watch other any of the other Big Ten teams whether it's Maryland or I mean you mentioned Purdue but any of the other schools yeah so I got to watch the Ohio State Cincinnati game I'm sorry um, about that yeah I mean that was ugly but <laughs> I mean to me like that was at the same time kind of a solidifying win for me for Ohio State in the sense of hey, hey like we can go eight minutes without scoring and look this terrible, but still beat a top 40 team in the country. Right. Um, so I, I like the Ohio state team. I think DJ Carton can turn out to be really good for them. Um, Michigan state. I think they're going to be fine. Um, I, again, I don't think they are the consensus number one that everyone thought they were coming into the year. Yeah. Um, Purdue, like, Again, I think Purdue will be fine. I, I was talking about before with somebody, but Matt Painter's kind of developed the system to where, like, yeah, their ceiling might change every year. Like, last year, their ceiling was a potential Final Four team. This year, you know, I don't think that's their ceiling, but their floor is now more, they're always going to be one of the 30 best teams in the country. Absolutely. Whether that's team number 29 or team number <laughs> six, there is each year, but it's like, he just raised the ceiling of Purdue. Like, I mean, they'll never be worse than, like, a seven seed that they top four or five team in the Big Ten. So um, I, I saw your, uh, your your story that you wrote the other day about Boudreaux and how uh, Roy McElroy tweets every year yeah. about him. I don't know if you saw my response to you because we just met you a couple prob- minutes ago, so you probably just brushed <laughs> it off. But I commented an article that listed 2018's most powerful women in the world, and... Boudreaux's oh, mom. Oh, like his mom. Is, yeah. yeah, his mom's on there. Yeah, like above Oprah and the, and the Queen of England, which is crazy. First of all, before you answer, we know Boudreaux yeah, because bad. he's in our in our high school's conference. Well, mine at least. We played him every year in high school, um, and we should have beat him, and they were the number two team in the state. It's a long long story, but I've always been he's always been a rival of mine even before he was at Purdue. But, yeah, ta- ta- tell us a little about the most interesting man in college basketball. Yeah, like, first off, he looks like a janitor. Like, he kind of looks like Brian Cardinal. Um, 
and, and like that's mean to Brian Cardinal, like first of all. Ball. <laughs> what you said? I said that's mean to Brian Cardinal. Don't that, come on. Uh, well, Brian Cardinal's nickname was the gender, but like well, yeah, he, I know, he but... looks exactly like you expect a, a Purdue basketball player to look like. Um, I should say a Purdue like power forward to look like. Like he's balding with some like curly, weird blonde <laughs> hair. This is he looks like this big goofy white guy, but he's a good player. He's a good and, player. You know, it's just one where it's like all of a sudden Rory McIlroy every year tweets good luck to the friend, <laughs> Evan Boudreaux, and like tags the team, whether it was Barkness or now <laughs> Purdue. And then this year, it's like Henrik Stenson, Billie Jean King, Ian Poulter are team too. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? It's just wild. I when when my high school played him, I made a huge sign because I was the uh, the leader of the student section. <laughs> I made a huge sign that said Boudreaux rated, and <laughs> if I would have known how powerful his mom was at the time, yeah, now Zolda can't get a job, not, so right? I probably like- <laughs> would not have done it. But I I don't, I don't know what she does. I don't know where she works or what she does. But somehow, some way, she is. Uh, more powerful than Oprah. So <laughs> I, I think that should probably be your last story about Boudreaux because you don't want to get have a hit out on you. I mean, from, that's a it's a positive story, though. You should all the, you should start saying, hey, good luck to my good friend Evan Boudreaux. <laughs> um, really looking forward to seeing him play this year. One of my one of my breakout stars for this year. Get on the mom's yeah, good like, side. I, I kind of think I need, to ju- <laughs> I need to jump on this train. Like, I would like to play in pro-ams with... I would like to play with, in pro-ams with... Roy McRoy. Yeah. I think I think you need to get every Barstool employee to tweet out <laughs> very excited this year for my good friend Evan Boudreaux and have like PFT, Big Cat, Portnoy, all those guys. No, because I'm like the I'm I'm like the D minus guy here. I want to be the only one on this. I only yeah. I want the only one to be invited. I, I'll agree with you on that. I think you need to be the conductor of the bandwagon. That's pretty clear. Yeah, but I can't like no, I don't want anyone else tweeting out stuff because everyone else would rather <laughs> hang out with Big Cat than me, me included. And then I that, want to be invited to things, not to be for the for like the guy that drove the train to have everyone else invited. No, I want all the benefits. Well, it'll be good because when you when he's playing for like a, a B level team in Bulgaria next year, like you can tweet out like "Good luck to my good friend Evan Boudreau as he starts for." Um, That's what I'm going to do. FB 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 Bulgaria. <laughs> if he plays professional basketball. I, I think that's going to be my shtick. Um, <laughs> good luck to my friend, Evan McGraw. Like, go, you know, Polish basketball league team. I wonder if he even. I wonder if he even wants to play professional basketball. I wonder if he, he definitely doesn't have to. But that's a, that's we've reached our allotment of Evan Boudreaux yeah, talk. He's sm- like he's smart, he's smart as hell. Like, yeah, Dartmouth clearly. and Purdue, you're not as dummy if you're in those schools. No, do you remember the uh, do you remember the Sean Oakman memes? The guy who played it at Baylor, where it would yep, be like for Baylor. It'd be like, yeah. go do your homework, no, and then like Sean Oakman picture like, him, like, okay, fine. It'd be like the refs going like, the, the, the call is, t- it's tails, and then, and then it's, yep, it's heads, sorry, Baylor, Baylor right, will right. not be serving the exactly. ball, and then Sean's like, we want the ball. We can, <laughs> we can do that, we can make that, but we'll just do Boudreaux's mom as the same <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. But we'll we'll move off of uh, Boudreaux. Maybe maybe some other players that you you've watched either this year or in the past that you think are kind of under the radar that Joey and I and the rest of uh, Buckeye Nation should be tuned into. Yeah, like I, that's always a weird like a weird thing to to answer in terms of like under the radar because I feel like everybody just lists the same people and no one's really ever under the radar anymore. It's like the Mike Conley syndrome. Where everyone always said Mike Conley is the most underrated player in the NBA, and it's like, or John Beeline is the most underrated coach in, in Michigan to the point where it's like, we're talking about them so much we can't call them underrated. Exactly. Like they're almost overrated because we keep saying they're the most underrated <laughs> player in the world. And I kind of like caught in that way where, like, I, I don't know who's under the radar because it's different for everybody. Like, is Anthony Blaine an under the radar player at like at Vermont? Because everyone who obviously follows the sport, um, they know he's great. Like he is, he is, it, right, exactly. But how many people know Vermont basketball? Anthony, um, well, Andrew looked at me like, who, who the hell is Anthony Lamb? So there you go. Sure, <laughs> sure. So it's like, yeah, like 
like that's a good part. Like that, that's 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 so it, it, it's a weird question to answer. Like, so then is, let me let me shift the question make, a little bit for you and tailor it to you because you yeah, you the all knowing college basketball man. Who who selfishly do you are you looking forward to watching this year that um, maybe the casual fan does it, it looks at them like why do you want to watch them? Oh, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, man, I don't know. Just like, you could throw out like, some names. It doesn't have to be one guy. So like, there's different, I guess, like different answers. Like, I selfishly want to watch Andrew Jones after the, him beating cancer, and because he was really good before he got leukemia too, and right. and he's finally healthy, and and you know drops twenty in his first game back. So like, he's a guy that you know kind of Texas that selfishly I'm enjoying watching. Um, DJ Carton from Ohio State, he's a guy that I'm really interested in. Um, Because I think he's such a difference maker for your Buckeyes um, to where they could be, you know, a Big Ten championship type team. Um, I'm curious about Xavier Simpson at Michigan going from John D-Line system (laughs) to Jawan Howard system. Like, that's a guy I'm interested in watching. Uh, I want to see Tyrese Maxey, you know, I self show you Kentucky. With Maxi, um, you know, he's got a little Kobe White in him. That Kobe White was super fun to watch, obviously, last year. If you don't hate North Carolina, um, so there, there's some, like again, answering the land was, was another answer. Uh, Io Desumu from from Illinois, I, I think he's probably another Big Ten guy that I'm selfishly want to watch. That you know, everyone's kind of expecting him to make a jump this year and Illinois to make a jump this year. You know, can he do that? So. You can always look at every conference, every school, and, and pick an eight. But those are kind of the guys that I, I'm selfishly looking at. I think we need to talk a little bit more about Tyrese Maxey, especially because you know our teams will be facing off in about a month um, in Vegas, which I tried to uh, convince Reeks to come to, and it's not looking so good. But uh, what yeah. what excites you most about him? He's incredible. If you guys haven't watched him, um, he was the leading scorer, the catalyst for them upsetting Michigan. Well, it wasn't an upset, I guess, but beating number one Michigan State. Um, the kid is definitely special. What um, what's most exciting in the Kentucky world? What's got him buzzing? Yeah, I mean, it's honestly his balls. Like the dude doesn't have any fear, and we saw that against Michigan State, right? Like biggest stage of his career. You're at the Garden. You're playing number one team in the country, and the dude just didn't care. And he wanted to take every big shot, whether it was that ridiculous three, but he also hit like a runner on the baseline before that happened to, you know, the Kentucky needs a bucket. He said, put the ball in his hands and, and go. He went nine for 10 from the free throw line. Like whether it's the fact that he just, it doesn't bother him or just, he just has these gigantic nuts where he wants the ball in his hands in, in these sort of situations. That's what has me excited as a Kentucky fan about him is, you need a dude like that on your team. So obviously, obviously, this game is is still a little while away. So tons of things could change between now and then. For all we know, Ohio State could be ranked fifth by this game, and Kentucky could be fifteenth. Who knows? What do you think if the game was tomorrow? What would some of the keys to victory be for both sides? Yeah, you know, I think for Kentucky, it's it's not turning the ball over a bunch because Ohio State kind of uglies the game up. Um, yeah, we do. As we saw against Cincinnati, <laughs> so it's it's kind of matching that toughness, and and obviously Weston is a, a unique big. Um, and I, you know, I kind of mentioned Kentucky's lack of depth in the front court. Um, from the other side, it's it's just getting the three guards going. I think that's going to be such a key for for Kentucky is if you can get kind of open shots and spread the floor, and then that just lets Hagens and and Maxi really attack off the bounce. I don't like that offense has a chance to be special because Kentucky's defense is special too. I mean, Ken Palm has not projected as the best team, defensive team in the country. We saw their rotations against Michigan State. We saw their ability to switch pick and rolls and kind of how they defended Cassius Winston. And yeah, that's that's going to be the, the the catalyst, I think. Yeah. No, I what if you were, I mean, if I'm an Ohio State fan, I'm thinking, okay, how are we going to stop these guards? Luckily, we have some really, really good guards ourselves. They're not McDonald's All-Americans, um, but, I mean, well, DJ Carton should have been. But that's another yeah. story. But, like, you know, we have guys like Dwayne Washington, Luther Muhammad, C.J. Walker, who 
who can really guard. Uh, Dwayne's got to get a little bit better if, if I mean, <laughs> if we're being honest. But Luther and CJ can can guard just about anyone in the country. So that's if I'm looking at as Ohio State, like we got to stop their guards. If you're on the reverse, what scares you about Ohio State besides Caleb? Exactly, you said the fact that they can guard, the fact that they can ugly this game up, and if they ugly it up, will it frustrate Kentucky? Like, do they try to press too much um, offensively and, and settle for that first look instead of kind of you know running running the the offense? You know, Cal likes run kind of those circle cuts um, and circle motion. Will if if Holtman's able to kind of ugly it all up? Do they do they press and then? Get in their head if it's let's say a you know twelve eight game at the under twelve timeout or something like that. Do you uh, remember the last time Ohio State played Kentucky in basketball? I was I was at that game. It you was were there when the very first. You didn't yeah, say, why don't, why don't you say hi for that game? <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. know you know, five years ago. I know that our friendship hadn't blossomed into what it is now. That was no. You know the I crazy sitting in the middle of Ohio State. I sat in the middle of Ohio State section. Oh, really? That's funny. Yeah, you were, that that game was one of. I still talk to like guys like Andre Weston, guys who were there last year with me, um, who. Well, he wasn't there, but he he knows the stories about this game. I was the only person on the team last year that um, played Kentucky and won that game my freshman year because I. You know, obviously everyone else transferred, but that was the coolest atmosphere because even though it was in Brooklyn, the entire stadium was rooting for Kentucky. We, I don't know. Obviously, that's in this matchup. They have North Carolina and um, and and I've, who, who's UCLA. 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 Yeah, they have them playing afterwards. Um, and it was still every. Not only was everyone wearing blue because of that, but everyone was rooting for Kentucky. Um, and we pulled off the upset, and I got a bloody nose celebrating. So that's like, yeah, my great story from that go. game. I was, I was Joey. I'm sure you were there too, Regs. You may have even been in town as well when the when the two games were at the United Center, and Ohio State played North Carolina, and UCLA played Kentucky, and Kentucky got off to like a 24 to two start. Oh, wasn't it like 31 nothing? That was- 42-7 at halftime. Oh that was gosh. that was insane. I was there. It was like it. It was ridiculous. I was so happy that I stayed. It was it was so cool. It was a good game. Yeah, that was <laughs> good game. Uh, your I Kentucky watched fan. that game on TV. So I have a I have a player for you to watch this year in the NBA. That's a little under the radar. Go ahead. So he's he's injured right now, but he should be making his return sometime around Christmas. Clay Thompson. No, um, he was like a top draft pick to the Pelicans. His name's like Zion something. <laughs> I think he's going to be special when he comes back from his injury, so you should keep an eye out for it. Yeah, he's probably pretty strong if I remember correctly. Uh, no, I think he's fat, not strong. There's no there's no, <laughs> that. there's no, Zion this year in college basketball. I feel like this year is – like I, if Cassius Winston wins player of the year, I feel like it's going to be a Jalen Brunson type season for them and – He's going to win player of the year, but there's not going to be Zion jumping out of the gym every night, and there's not going to be Trey Young hitting shots from 400 feet. feet away. Like I think this is just going to be like a very respectable like the, the, college bo- the boomers. The boomers are going to love this season of college basketball. It's going to, it's your father's college, but your grandfather's college basketball season. <laughs> Maybe, but like you still have Cole Anthony, you still have Terry Maxey, you still have um, DJ Carden. Teach a card. You still have these guys that are freshmen, top, you know, likely going to be top, like top ten picks that I'm sure will piss off the boomers because Cole Anthony goes for like forty in a game where it's the Cole Anthony show. What do you think about uh, one and done and all that kind of stuff? Where's your Where's your stance on that? I mean, I'm very pro player. Like, I think the one and done should be done. Like. Let, if they want to go pro, let them go pro. I, I think the idea of whether you go pro or have to go two years is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Um, you know, I'm very much let players make money on name, image, likeness. I'm I'm very much like just kind of let them do whatever because the NCAA has never been a true playing field. Like it's never been. Everyone's like, well, what about competitive balance? It's like there is no such thing. Like, Kentucky has always had an advantage over Long Beach State. Nothing is going to change. <laughs> the beach. <laughs> So I, I think like, – like it, it, Go ahead. 
I was going to say, just like, yeah, selfishly, I love watching these guys in college because we get a year of it. You know, it's awesome that Anthony Davis was in college for a year. It's awesome that, you know, we had Trey Young for a year. It's awesome that we had Zion for a year. But at the same time, like, if they want to go somewhere else, what if they can go pro, let them go pro. Would you rather have one year of Zion or four years of me if you could go back in a time machine? <laughs> oh, give me a year of Zion. Okay. I Fair. think – that's the popular choice. I think changing the one and done solves like one fifth of the problems because my fear. Well, my fear with the one and dones is that guys like DJ Carton, who are not ready to go and play in the NBA right now, are going to want to leave from high school and go to the NBA, and then their careers are going to fizzle out and be nothing. And NBA teams are never going to keep guys along because they can just pull another 17-year-old or 18-year-old, pay them less and take a chance on them rather than develop. Like, I think guys like Scal will not play more than one contract in the NBA if they don't find a way to have, like, the 30 through Scal's 100. Scal's already on a second contract. Is he on number two? Yeah, dude, he's been on eight teams. I don't, yeah. think, he's on, I don't think he's on a second contract. Yeah, he is. He's on a second team because he got traded, but I don't think he's on a second yeah. contract. I'm Wait, back sure me up, please. signed him to a... Yeah, they. Well, then I'm looking it up. I'm pretty sure Scal just got a second contract. If we're talking about Scal, our entire game plan was to attack him when we played Kentucky. Right? We, oh my God, he, we thought he was. So yeah, soft. I mean that's fair. Like, <laughs> and to let Tyler Ulis so, shoot. All right, so no, he's. Yeah, yeah, he's first right. contract. Mm, looks he's like he's still on his first contract. All right, all right mm. tally that up. Andrew won. Joey and Reek seven thousand and twenty-two. <laughs> <laughs> but he's also making two point three million dollars this year. Right, oh, so in, in in real world, he get to make that much in money? real world, he's fine. But in like this world where everyone is leaving and there's no reason to want to go in college, like he's going to lose out on opportunities. A guy like that, but there need. I just think you, if you do one and done, you also still need to find a way to pay the players that go to college, or else all these guys are just going to fizzle out, and we're going to have. We're going to lose out. This is selfish, but we're going to lose out on seeing guys who need a year or two in college first. You you potentially lose the Kawhis and the Paul Georges. Those guys would never get a chance in the NBA if every year there's 30 high school kids getting drafted right away. Except the problem is we've li- – like that's not true because we've lived in a world where one and done wasn't a thing, so I know what to expect. You're talking about like seven to eight guys a year. But I think I I, I agree like we, with you because there we've was, already seen this. I just think it's a completely different era with the with the oh, with overtime and and slam and all these things that like kids are like it, I, I gotta it, go to the league right now. But the GMs still, still go out still, there and watch it play. It, like it's not this it's like, overtime isn't picking who's going to the NBA. Right. It's still scouting. Like it's still all bad. I, it's just you know. I, I, I'm not worried about it. Like you're still gonna get like, we still had Tim Duncan in the world without one and done. It's like, yeah, right, I'm not like I'm not like shivering so at night like pulling my I'm, covers over my head, but like I I, I don't want to lo- I don't want to lose the DJ Cartons of the world because they think they should go to the NBA right I mean, away. I, I'll just say this, and then we can move on from this. But Jalen, who obviously is a close friend of the podcast and a close friend of mine. He wasn't going to the NBA, even though he's a McDonald's All-American. So, I mean, like, there are plenty of guys that are probably realistic is the best word is to use. They have realistic expectations. They know, they're, they know they are great, and they know they're going to be in the NBA, but why rush it? Like, okay, like, maybe you make a million dollars in your first year, but, like, you could be making seven if you stay another year. And, like, that's, like... I agree. That's, like, what Coach Mata's pitch all the time was to these recruits, especially in the world of um, where people are getting paid to go to these schools most likely like to D'Angelo Russell and he talked about it when he got inducted into the Hall of Fame like you might not get it right away but eventually because you come to Ohio State and you well for D'Angelo was one year but the plan was two years and because you stay one or two years like that's gonna in time your investment's gonna pay off and for D'Angelo is to the tune of a hundred million dollars you know so like I don't I think I'm with you Riggs in terms of the one and done doesn't solve anything it doesn't change much like we would have Maybe we have, like, James Wiseman still the number one pick, but, like, beyond that, like, LaMelo Ball wasn't going to go to the NBA straight out of school. He wasn't going to get drafted. And then you look two years later, he's developed, and he's, I mean, a man amongst boys, even though he's 18 years old in the Australian League. So, 
Well, Lamelo, I think, is the one is the one example that he would have tried to go to the NBA right away, for sure. Him of all but people. Mean, like, this would be his year in the NBA now. Like, right. it's not like he's not getting drafted when he's sixteen. So, right. Exactly. Like, I think he would have tried again, to. Go- I think. Go ahead. I think you're overreacting to the internet where I just know I, I've lived in a world without the one and done. I, I kind of know what to expect. I don't think anything's going to really change. Like you, you, you won't do, you won't have the Anthony Davises. You won't have Zion. You won't have RJ Barrett, but you're still like Trey Young still in college for a year. Uh, Jalen Brunson still in college for, for a few years. Like, in the grand scheme of things, like you're not losing, like you're not, you're not missing out on Paul George or Kawhi Leonard. You're missing out on Anthony Davis. Yeah. I, Riggs, we know you love to play commissioner. So I guess while we're on the topic of this, if you could make one change to college basketball, what would it be? Um, God, probably that unsportsmanlike technicals would uh, and maybe do I get rid of unsportsmanlike technicals? Well, there's a or, new rule this year. There, there's a new rule this year where if you swear and they hear you, it's a t- it's a T automatically. No, no foul language. Yeah, that I mean, that that needs to be done. Like it's possible. Um, Book it. Yeah, that or like. They need to come with fouls just because of how ridiculous like foul calls are. That I maybe go to quarters like that Ooh. needs to probably happen. Um, what about six fouls? What do you think about that? Fouls? Well, that's the thing. Like with so either technical shouldn't count for like a personal foul, or we need to move to six fouls and and kind of keep it the same. Um, you know, I I don't understand why college basketball is the only basketball sport in the world where we play have. Yeah, it is weird, right? I I think that's the easiest change. I think if you add six fouls to just make it as much like the NBA game as possible because you add six fouls and a guy like my best example is a guy like Caleb Wesson who there are plenty of games where he gets two fouls in the first 10 minutes of a half because these dudes are 6'10", huge, stronger than oxes, banging down low like they are going to foul, like that's going to happen. So like if you make it six fouls, it allows him to play the yep. entire half Um not in quote unquote foul trouble. And like Holman is the best because he doesn't sit you down the entire half if you have two fouls. But like that would be a huge game changer because coaches wouldn't have to make that decision. And we can watch guys like like if Miles Powell had two fouls early in the game against when they play Michigan State on Thursday, like that would be a huge bummer to the national audience that's watching that game, you know? We just, just Yep, I we, we want to make college basketball more watchable. There you go. I mean People love it already. I agree. Or make the entire season an NCAA tournament. People love the NCAA tournament so much. <laughs> I got a, I got yeah, one, exactly. I got, I got a big hypothetical question for you. I was arguing this with some of my buddies last night. If, and I'll tell you what side I was on. If Blake Griffin swaps out for Ja Morant in last year's tournament, Murray State wins the college basketball national championship. Yes or no? Um. No. Yeah, I say no. Also, really. I mean, no. I mean, you're talking about a one game scenario, right? Like, it's not a series. It's not something like that. Like, what if Blake shoots two for fourteen in a game? Are they the favorite? I mean, do they play the whole year together, or do they just throw them in the tournament? No, he he's he's on he's on Murray State the whole year. Okay, well, that's different. I think if you're picking a person, it's got to if you put like Kyrie Irving on any team, like that is a better chance just because point guards are just I don't know. I, I don't know who's guarding Blake. And imagine if Caleb Wesson tries to guard Blake. I'd rather have I mean, C.J. Walker on Kyrie than Wesson <laughs> on on Blake Griffin. I mean, that's just I mean that's not fair. Ultimately, but like John Morant, they couldn't guard him. What about Mahomes on Kentucky's football team? How far do they go? <laughs> I mean, this year they win nine games. Uh-huh. Like this year, if Mahomes is on Kentucky this year, they beat Florida, they beat Tennessee, they beat either South Carolina or Mississippi State. I mean, I don't think I don't think they lose any of those. I Wait, think what I think you're not losing until you play in Alabama or in LSU or Ohio with State. Mahomes or Ohio State. Or Ohio State. They, they probably lose to Georgia. Yeah. What about um, if Mahomes was on the Chicago Bears? What do you think? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. They, they, the, it's almost like they 
draft. It's almost like they could have drafted him. Yeah, right. I someone they put that graphic up um, like every single game, obviously, but then they put it up during a college football game, and I quote tweeted it and was like, "Wait, you're telling me we could have had Deshaun Watson or <laughs> Patrick Mahomes? Like, wait, no one's told me this before." And it's just holy moly. Yeah, they 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 uh, love doing that. It's probably Bleacher Report. Well, <laughs> we uh we won't keep you any longer, but before we wrap this up, is there anything we didn't talk about you'd like to discuss, bring up anything you're promoting like that? No, man. I mean, uh yeah, just, you know, after you listen to this, listen to my podcast Fundamentally Sound. Um it's a daily kind of like 25-minute show. Uh, you know, keep reading the blogs if you can, and, and it's all greatly appreciated. That fundamentally sound podcast sounds pretty cool. Sounds like they might have had some good guests recently. Um, feel free to check out my podcast with Riggs, where we talked all about name, image, image and likeness, towel gang stuff. It's yep. a great, it's a great listen. Riggs is the man. Read his blogs. Hey, listen to his podcasts. All right. After that. Double dose of interviews. A little double dip. I'm not, a little double doink. <laughs> we are now going no to doinks. talk about the college football Frankenstein. Yeah, and uh, basically it's... No, we're not doing that. I'm just kidding. This this concludes our episode. Of course you need to go to highstreetees.com slash DTL, promo code DTL15. We will see you in Penn State in a couple weeks. See you in Columbus for Penn State. We will see you in Columbus for the Penn State game. Let's do a little, if you're listening to this still, on our way to Columbus, if you're familiar, we drive through a couple of states to get there. Well, just one state. That state's Indiana. If, If you're still listening, there's a little hint in one of the outstanding guests that we will be having on shortly, which we will be recording with on our way there, in addition to a bunch of Columbus superstars. While we're in Columbus. So, our plan is to go a little Friday night Ohio State basketball, a little Saturday Ohio State football, a little Sunday maybe Browns football if we're lucky enough. So, we're excited for that weekend. We're excited to see you guys there. Andrew can't wait to take pictures with you guys. Yes. So, please come up and recognize me. Oh, God, that will make his day. I'll I'll definitely be sending a tweet out to make sure you guys know to do that. But, yes, it, this was a fun episode. A little bit of a long episode uh, with the little double dip action we had going on. But, um Yeah, if you guys made it this far, you guys are superstars, so thanks for that. Buckle up, drive the lane, highstreettees.com, slash DTL, promo code DTL15, and we will see you, slash hear you, slash you will hear us next time. We will see you. I can't wait to give you guys a hug in Columbus. We will see you. Or hand you next time. See ya. Buckle up and drive the lane. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We got Letterman Live, we've got the practice report, we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buck IQ with Zach Bourne. For sure. We got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. We got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State Athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.